Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So we're going to do things a little bit different today. My daughter Emma is 13 and she has been asking for some time now to learn how to do resin. So we played around with it a little bit at Christmas time, but she didn't really do much. So this is going to be like her first really real attempt at resin and she wants to do kind of like a vanity set for her room with a tray and a jar and a lotion bottle so that's what we're going to do today now emma picked all the colors and she wanted to go kind of springtime colors with blue and green and yellow so that's what we're going to do the first thing that we decided that we wanted to do is just in certain areas on each one of these molds we are going to dust them with some mica powder and we are just using the rolio micas that i have now I, i'm not going to talk through the whole part of us dusting it, it, it's very simple there are only certain areas that we're going to do and then we are going to take the time and i'm going to show her how to clean it and show you guys how to clean it if you're new to resin and all we did for cleaning it was a combination of baby wipes and some alcohol on some q-tips just to kind of clean it and at some points I do use a microfiber cloth especially like on the big tray just to get any streaks from the baby wipes drying off of there so that there's not going to be any kind of like water spots or anything like that but as we go through this process here i'm just going to have some music playing for you guys and then i will come back when we get to the next step Like I said, we didn't do a whole lot of dusting. Now I've got my resin mixed up and today I'm using my Nick Pro resin. I'm also going to use some of Rolio's solid color liquid pigments. Now they graciously sent me some and I didn't do the unboxing today. I will do the unboxing in another video coming out here real soon. But I just kind of wanted to play around with them and they're very pastel -y colors. So we kind of just wanted to get the base. This isn't a showcase on these in particular because they're not going to be by themselves. I am using these kind of as a base color 
and not having known like because I've not used them before kind of how much pigment you need to put in there or whatever to get them to you know get the color that you want from it I started with just a couple drops because you know I wasn't sure like it's not a pigment paste and I guess in using them initially I thought maybe it kind of was so I started off with just a very small amount just because I didn't want to put too too much in so I am kind of just adding a little bit at a time until I feel like I get the undertone of the right base color for what I want now they have a lot of the colors have like a darker version and lighter version so I started off with the lighter version and then I am going to add a little bit of the darker version to it now this is like to look at it here it looks foggy it, it, it's not foggy it's just the underline because there is I believe now I could be speaking completely out of context but just from looking at it and from working with it there's definitely some type of a white um maybe some type of a white pigment in it that is giving it that opaque look which is what I want for this particular project but I don't want the color to be quite this light or this color which is why I'm mixing several different colors in together but I want that basis of the undertone that I have in there if that makes sense so like where I'm liking this I want a little bit more color to it but I don't want to do straight like right now I'm adding in a little bit of let's resin alcohol inks in it and I just want to kind of take that color up a notch but I still want to have that slight opacity to it like it's not going to be solid solid I don't want it solid solid but I don't want it completely completely translucent either so I put just enough in of the solid colors to kind of start to give it the illusion of solid but not enough to make it completely solid if that makes sense I don't really I feel like I'm doing a horrible horrible job at explaining it I know what I want in my head and to get it into the words is not really working with me and then I'm just gonna add the alcohol ink until I kind of get the color that I want the reason I'm not doing straight alcohol ink is if I do that it's just gonna be completely translucent and I don't want that so I want that kind of for lack of better terminology almost the cloudiness that I'm getting in there but I want the color slightly brighter I guess maybe than what it is if that makes sense I don't know anyway and then I added just a little bit of the Super Sparkle by Rolio. It's the pearl white. And now Emma's going to pour it into the lotion dispenser, soap dispenser, whatever you want to call it. And what I'm going to do first is around that bottom, I'm just kind of squishing the resin around so that it gets into all those because this is a very faceted mold and I want to make sure that I'm not going to have an issue with air bubbles now we didn't mix up enough blue I, I really you know me I don't measure my mold so I didn't know how much this kind of was going to be you know how much resin I need to mix up so but it's fine we have a little bit of space left so instead of mixing up some more blue I talked to her about it and we're just going to add a little bit of clear just kind of push it around and maybe get an ombre effect now we all know that resin does as resin wants so i don't really know what's going to happen but we're okay if it went more solid color into a clear color at the bottom and it'll be just something a little bit different so we're just gonna play with it and see how it turns out all right on to the little jar now for this one i am doing the same thing there's two different color greens in this solid set, so we are starting with the lighter one. We will add a little bit of the darker green, a little bit more of that Rolio Super Sparkle, but the difference that I did in this one, and honestly, she loves it. I, I don't want to say I don't love it. It's fine, but I think that... I went with a little bit of the mica powder that we had 
dusted onto it. And I just did a tiny bit because I still wanted it to have that kind of translucent-ish look to it. But along with that kind of milky look that the, the solid colors are giving it. But in doing so and adding the mica powder to it, it just made it look like mica powder. So I lost all of the kind of look that I was going for in adding the solid colors. And that was kind of disheartening a little bit. I, I thought that it would be okay just doing a little bit. It really wasn't. But I didn't really have any alcohol inks that were the right shade of green. Like, I have the emerald green and, the, you know, the yellow green and all that. But they just weren't that kind of the green that I have in this mica powder. Like, it just, it, I don't know. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to. And then I wanted there to be difference between the color that we dusted on there and the color that we are actually pouring into it. And when you demold it, like when we demold it later on, there's no difference. I, I thought that even just doing just a little bit would make it a little bit different. But really, I mean, you, you can't tell. So now she's going to pour it in here. And of course, you know, there's not enough because why would there be? So we are going to have to add a little bit more. We're going to have to mix up some more resin and then we're going to do the same thing that we did. Oh, I guess we don't have to mix up more resin because we have some here off to the side for the clear part. But we're going to add a little bit more in here just to fill it up, push those colors around and see if we can't maybe get the same effect as we're going to get in the soap dispenser mold that we filled. But I don't know. We'll see. All right. So hit it with the heat gun real quick just to pop any bubbles put that off to the side and now it's time to start these lids. Now for the lids, what we wanted to do is we're going to add a little bit of the super sparkle and now where is where our flowers are going to come into play. We want just the tiniest bit just in the bottom part of this mold of resin for the flowers. Now the flowers are going to be multicolored, mainly using the colors that we're using today. Now we do need an, an extra color just because there's not enough in these packets of the colors that we're using. So we're going to add white to it because why not? And we're just going to kind of tie all of the pieces in together by mixing up the colors. So now's the time. <laughs> she, she struggled so hard with this. Bless her heart. She did. She had such a hard time picking up these flowers with the tweezers and you know, we all know if you work with resin, you're getting sticky and she has an issue because the gloves were too big. So her hands were sticking to everything and she, she kept getting stuck to the flowers and to the tweezers and she couldn't grip the flowers and she was scared that she was going to ruin them because I told her that, you know, they're really delicate, whatever. So she, she did struggle with this part quite a bit and it was, it was kind of funny to watch, but she got there. She got there in the end. So for the little part of the lid, we're only going to add three flowers because to add any more would just, it, it just wouldn't fit right. So we're just going to kind of go with the flower colors or with the colors that we have that we're using in all of these pieces. And um, we're putting them in there, flipping them over just to make sure that the, the flowers are completely, completely coated with resin and, you know, no issues of bubbles and all of that fun stuff. And then we'll hit it with our heat gun and move on to the lid of the lotion dispenser. And then from there, we're going to do the same thing with the tray. We're going to do a clear layer of resin and then add some flowers and some other fun stuff to it just to kind of give it its, you know, all tied in together and make it super, super pretty. All right. So with this little mold, now there is the screw top on here for the actual like dispenser part of it. So you do want to make sure that you're getting in there really good to make sure that you don't have any bubbles that get stuck in all of those little threads. And I do go in there with a heat gun. I go in there with a silicone tool and I also squeeze it really, really well just to make sure that I'm getting any air out of there before I fill it up the whole way because you don't want to fill it first and then do this. You're going to get resin everywhere. 
hit it with a heat gun, and now it's time to place the flowers on the top of this lid. And this is where we decided that we needed to add the white because we wanted to add one of each color, but for this, we kind of did need four. So instead of having it look off with two of one color and then not really having enough for the tray, we just decided that we'd throw in white here too and it would be fine. Now, my initial thought was to put the flowers in, have a clear layer, and then go back and add some blue to the top of it just to kind of, you know, have it go more with the actual dispenser itself or the the actual, like, what's going to hold it, the big piece. But because of the way that I mixed the color in the last one, I, there was too many color combination or too many colors that went in there and not knowing the exact amount, I decided that it would probably be safest just to fill it up with clear and be done with it instead of trying to match that color because I, God knows I wouldn't be able to do it again. So we just decided to go on with clear and hope and pray that, you know, the flowers wouldn't float because that was kind of a, a worry of mine. Okay, so now it's time to do the first layer of the tray mold. We poured in a little bit of the clear, and again, this has the Rolio pearl white in it for a little bit of that sparkle, and now I'm just hitting it with the heat gun really, really well to pop any bubbles. Make sure that when you do surfaces like this, especially if you're using clear where you can actually see it, you do want to check because sometimes there are bubbles that like to cling to the surface of your mold. So you do want to make sure that, you know, you don't have any, any bubbles that are stuck there because then they're going to turn into, you know, those little crater holes on the, the top part of your piece. And, and nobody wants that. That's, it, it sucks. Ended up pouring the rest of it in. We weren't sure if we were going to need it all, but we decided best to make sure that we have enough and if it goes up a little bit higher onto where we had put the yellow on the sides it's fine it's not going to make a big deal because you're you're not going to really see that line anyway because of the mica powder being on there just going around those edges just to make sure that there's no bubbles stuck there before we add our flowers and then it's just a matter of placing the flowers in there and Emma struggling a little bit more to get, to get them in. <laughs> she ended up just kind of flopping them down and I had to kind of fix them because they go flying off of her, off of her tweezers here in a minute. It's, it, it was funny. She, she had a time with these flowers, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, so that's all we're going to do now is we're going to start placing all these flowers down. Now we do want to make sure that Again, we're covering both front and back of them to make sure that there's no air bubbles that are going to get trapped there and kind of like dispersing the colors all over the place so that if we can avoid having two of the same color together, that's what we're going to go for just so that it's kind of, you know, almost looks like a cute little flower garden when we demold it. That's kind of what we're going for ish. So she decided that for the actual like pump itself that she wanted to go with silver. So because of that, we decided that we we're going to add a little bit of the silver glass glitter to this just to add a little bit more interest to this piece. So all I did was sprinkle some in there and then make sure that I pushed it all down underneath the surface of the resin. Now, would it make a difference if it was floating on top? Not necessarily because we are putting another layer on this after it dries, but I do want to make sure that they're not going to be so high up, like sticking out on the end that I am going to cover that you're going to lose them. So I do want to just kind of spread them out a little bit more because they did kind of land clumpily and just push them all down really, really well. Make sure that there's none sticking on top of the flowers because that's kind of pointless. You're not going to see them. And then after that, we will hit it with the heat gun one more time to make sure that there are no bubbles in there, you know, from me incorporating them, mixing this resin around, trying to get the glass done. And that's it. 
All right, so 24 hours later, now it's time to put on the next layer of resin. Now, just as we did with the last two pieces, we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to go with those solid colors by Rolio, mix it in. I'm using the two different yellows that they gave us, and then we're also going to add in some of Cheap Arts Lemon Yellow Alcohol Ink just to kind of brighten up that yellow just a little bit more and go with it and just see what happens now on this again i didn't measure no surprise there so we're gonna do it slightly different because of the amount that i had to use the first time i'm adding you know all all of the yellows right i'm adding both of the solid color yellows I'm adding the alcohol ink yellow, and then I'm going to add some of the super sparkle as well. Not that that will probably make a whole lot of difference adding the super sparkle because we do have it in that clear layer, but I don't know. We did it with the rest, so we're just going to do it with this one too. Now, the yellow is super pretty. Like, I, I do like this yellow, but we did want it just a little bit brighter. Just because we had done it with the other pieces, we figured we need, just to make them all look more cohesive, we wanted to do it with this as well. So, in it goes. And then, when we add the rest of the resin to this, we're going to do it a couple different ways. So... This is going to get poured in. Clearly, it's not enough. Like, I almost need double the amount of what I'm doing right here. But it is a gorgeous yellow. Like, I really like it. I, I And I love the kind of milkiness kind of color that it has. Like, it's really, really pretty. She decided that for the next bit of yellow that we do, that... We're going to just go with the solid colors. We're not going to add any more of the alcohol ink to it. Because she did really like this color, but she didn't want it to be too, too, too bright. And the yellow alcohol ink, if you do it, like, it's kind of weird. Because it's like you almost need more of the alcohol ink in yellow to make it get that color. But if you do less, like... I don't know. It seems like it doesn't do anything. So you almost need a lot of yellow, in my opinion. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we decided that we're just going to actionate the alcohol ink on this part. We're just going to go in there with those solid colors to kind of not necessarily bring it down, but to see what we can get when it merges with the yellow that we have in there. And then for the rest, because this still isn't it's not enough. And, and we knew this for the rest, we're going to go in with the clear like we did in the other two pieces, just to keep up with the same thing, just to kind of see if we can get the same type of effects. Now, the difference between those and this is obviously this is a tray and it's over a longer, it's not like deep, right? Like those, the, the container for the lotion and then the one that's just the, the little jar mold, they're deeper. So it, the resin's going to react a little bit differently than it is with this. But we she wanted to see what we'd get. So we filled it up the rest of the way with clear. This way we could possibly get the clear. We could possibly get two variations of yellow in there to kind of ombre it. Or we could not get any at all. Like... Who knows how the, the resin is going to react. We know it's going to pull towards the center to cure. So are we going to lose the clear? It's highly probable. But we'll just have to wait until tomorrow and see. Now for the lid, the same exact thing. And this is for the green. So I'm going in there the same way I did the colors for the jar. Even though I am looking at the jar and it's already cured... I haven't demolded it yet, but I can tell that it it's not how I wanted it to be. Like, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not bad, but it's not going to give me the, what I thought I wanted or what I want. <laughs> but 
I, I've got to keep it consistent. So I'm adding in the mica powder anyway. And we're adding in the super sparkle and all the things that we did before to kind of give it the same kind of look. Now, the only thing that I did differently on the lid than I did with the jar is I did not add any clear resin to it at all, which hindsight, I probably should have. But quite honestly, I kind of forgot about the clear part until I had already colored all the resin. And at that point, there wasn't a whole lot I could do. Like I wasn't going to mix up a tiny bit of resin just for that. So it is what it is. Now I am going underneath here with my dotting tool because I can clearly see, especially right there, that there is a bunch of air trapped in there. I'm kind of squishing the mold a little bit to pop that bubble that's in there. And hopefully I get it all and I'm not going to have any issues. And of course, you know, spilling it out the other side as I'm doing this because I'm not paying attention to what's going on over there. But it's fine. Hit it with the heat gun. Pour a tiny bit more in there just to fill it up the rest of the way. And we're going to let this cure after I play with it a little bit more. And hope for the best. The main thing I worry about is air bubbles getting trapped underneath the mold, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, so these pieces are ready to go, and I'm just showing her how to demold. She's never demolded anything before, and we're going to work on the lotion dispenser. And what I'm doing is, because this is so deep, I am going to add a little bit of alcohol in here just to kind of break up that that seal between the resin and the mold and yes I know I shouldn't use alcohol I should use soapy water to go in here but I didn't think about it at the time and I didn't have any right next to me alcohol is what I had so it's kind of what I used and we're just going to demold this <laughs> And she's stuck over here. She doesn't know how to get it out the rest of the way. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad she was struggling. It, it's funny. She couldn't figure out. She was scared that she was going to break it. So she couldn't figure out what to do. But uh, yeah, she, she, she figured it out after I told her. I think the lid, the little part that she's holding, turned out super, super cute. Like, I like it a lot. I really do. And I'm glad... I think that I didn't put the blue in the background of it because quite honestly, you're going to get the illusion of the blue from this and it may have made it too dark to where we may not have been able to see like the flowers at all. Like it just may have kind of just made it too dark and you would just lose them in there and, and not be able to see how pretty they, they really are together. So this is the actual soap dispenser. And do you see what I mean? How that solid color kind of gave it like this milky background to it. Because if I had used just the straight alcohol ink on this, I would not have gotten that. So it's not transparent at all. Like you can't see through it really, except towards the bottom where I poured that clear resin. But it does have like this milky kind of look to it, which I really, really like a lot. Now, this, on the other hand, you, you lost all of that because I added the mica powder. So, if I were to give a suggestion and you were to try something like this, it would be find some kind of other, like, maybe not even alcohol ink. Maybe I should have just used a different, like, pigment or whatever, liquid pigment, something, something other than mica powder. Because, yes, it's pretty. But it's not, it's just not, it's not the same. It doesn't have the same feel to it because I used that. So that I would have definitely done different to come up with a different green or something where I think the mica powder brushed in those areas, which, you know, you lose too. I mean, can you tell the difference if you're looking? Yes, because you can see how the mica acts when it's in resin as opposed to when it's on the mold. But to sit there for you to look at it here, you can't tell that there's a difference in what we did because the colors were the same, you know? So, eh, I should have used a different green, but 
she really likes it. That's all that matters at the end of the day is that she likes it because this is for her bedroom. So there you have it. Now on to this tray, which I think is very, very lovely. I like it a lot. I think it's very pretty. I like how you get the effects for where the clear resin was in the middle and the little just designs that you get. And this is kind of what it looks like together. Now we are going to do a little bit more because I'm not done yet. I feel like it needs a little something something. And first though, we got to clean up these edges because demolding that green piece, I sliced my, my thumb pretty good and uh, it was not fun. So we're going to clean up the edges to all of these first. And then we're going to detail this out a little bit more because where it's pretty, yes, it, it, it definitely, definitely needs a little more something. So we're going to get our Deco Color Silver Paint Pen, the chisel tip one, and we're going to kind of add some highlights to it. Give this piece a little bit more definition a little bit more fun and tie in that silver just a little bit more because I figure she's got the silver that's going for the actual pump piece itself. We have the silver glitter glass in the yellow tray, but really there's no silver on this green piece. There's not a lot of silver in the tray. Like you can see it. Yes, but it, it needs more. It, it just, it just needs more. So we're going to, we're going to do that here in just a second as soon as I'm done cleaning up these edges. Now this mold right here that I'm working on, it did like everything that I'm cutting off now was like a bunch of like bubbles that got trapped there. So I didn't pay enough attention to that to make sure that those bubbles got out. I should have babysat it a little bit longer and I didn't. I mean, can you tell? Not really, but it's still there. And so you, these type of molds, you need to pay a little bit more attention to babysit a little bit longer to make sure you're getting in like a, a silicone tool or something in there and pulling those bubbles out. Maybe even a spritz of alcohol would have helped. I, I didn't do that. I typically don't use alcohol a lot to pop bubbles, but something like this, maybe I should have. All right. So now we're just going over the tiniest little bit of this tray with the silver, just for that added little something, something. And I think it just finishes it off nicely. I really do. So now we're going to tie this into the green piece as well, a little bit just around the edge of the lid. And then we're going to go, I think, around the edge of the actual container itself. Just, I think I do. I don't remember, actually. And of course, I can't see it from where it's at. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see together. But I, I did just go just around the tiniest bit of that lid. And now, yes, I do add it to just the top part, just the, the thinnest little line around the container to just to tie it all in together. All right. And now I'm going to edge out just the top of this blue one as well. This is to tie in just a little bit more with everything else that has it a little bit around this top part. Now, the top part, I believe, I've never actually seen one of these put together, but I believe you're probably supposed to glue it in here. I'm going to wait and talk to her and see if that's how she wants me to do it or if she just wants it left like it is before I do anything. Um, you could either use some E6000, maybe some super glue, uh, I mean, hot glue if you really wanted to, or possibly UV resin to get it in there. Now, the one thing I did find a little weird when putting this together is that they don't give you like the attachments for the pump. The actual little tubey things are not the right size. Like they're way, way, way too long. And the way that they have it cut at the bottom. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm so stupid. Okay, so the way that they have it cut at the bottom, you shouldn't cut off of it, but me, being me, cut off the bottom when I should have just cut a straight line off the top because that would have been the smart thing to do, and I didn't do it because it literally just dawned on me right now. So, 
Yeah, if you're going to do that, cut from the top, not the part that they have so that you can actually get it out. Be smart. Don't be like me. Anyway, that's a wrap on this one. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will catch you guys on Thursday in the next one. Love ya. Bye.